Hello and welcome to Ben360 Field, Progressive Equipment Mapping. My name is Bill Niddle and I'm an AEC Applications Consultant here at Synergist Engineering Design Solutions. In this video, we're going to look at a situation where you may encounter certain items not mapping across from Revit to your field environment. When mapping equipment from Revit to Ben360 Field, you must understand that it follows a simple multi-step circular workflow. First, we must build a Revit model containing components of property data to integrate with BIM360 Field. Second, we have to glue the Revit model to BIM360 Glue. Third, we have to create equipment sets from items in the glue model. Fourth, we have to share the equipment sets from BIM360 Glue to BIM360 Field. Fifth, we have to add the shared models to BIM360 Field. Six, we have to set up equipment mappings in BIM360 field, including the addition of equipment properties for round tripping to Revit. Seventh, we have to enter values for field properties. This synchronizes back in glue. And then finally, eight, we'll round trip the values back to Revit. BIM360 field allows you to use components from your Revit model as equipment sets. And the awesome power of this is that you can transfer information from inside of your components in your Revit model to the field environment. And then you can also transport field properties back to your Revit components that don't exist yet, uh, such as construction information or operations and maintenance information. So here I have uh, some mechanical equipment representing a variable refrigerant flow system, and I'm going to glue that to BIM360 glue, because glue is the uh, conduit between Revit and field to have this work. As you can see, my model's gluing, and I'm just going to refresh real quick to get the model, and there you can see it's in there. As I select that model, you'll notice that it displays on my screen, and one of the important things that uh, is very, very useful between uh, communicating Revit information to the field app or service is uh, a GUID. So here we see the GUID for a heat pump, and, uh, and we'll just do a couple other instances here. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in on the model. I'm going to take a look at a, uh, a unit. Um, and you can see here that when I go to the parent object, I can see the good for that guy. And then if I come back out, I'm going to take a look at just one more piece of the entire network here, which is the heat recovery unit that uh, splits the uh, refrigerant information throughout the, uh, the network. So you can see here when we go to the parent object, it also, too, has a GUID. And this is important because we're going to use that in field. Okay, so now we've taken a look at the properties of the model once it's glued into the glue environment, and we're going to create our equipment set. So equipment sets can be created in a number of ways. Uh, I'm just happening to use the uh, category from Revit under the parent object. So if I go to my element and I scroll down my properties here, you'll see that um, we can find the uh, element um, category. So I'm going to select with the right mouse button here to create an equipment set for the mechanical equipment category because that's all it's really in this model that I published to glue. And now I'll give my equipment set a name which is VRF equipment. Now you can be very selective here or you can be very general with your selection to create an equipment set. Uh, but in order to get this information now to field I have to go and share it to field. So you have to have field enabled on your project just like you do glue. Uh, in the BIM 360 environment. So now my glue model has been shared to field. I can switch over to my field application and within the project administrative module I'm going to go and refresh uh, my models here so I can see that glue has indeed published the model to field and it's worth noting that you have to have um, a setting inside a field to make this work. Alright so it has to be BIM enabled in your options. So here I'm going into the model. I'm going to go select my equipment set. And you can see that all 58 items are being read by field. Uh, in, in certain instances, I was having elements drop off and not come over into, into field when I finished the mapping process. And I think it was because I was asking too much of the service uh, to bring across. So uh, I've applied it to a type. And uh, now I'm going to use the GUID that we were just showing in glue to be the uh, identifier. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go map that property from glue to a property in field called the asset identifier. Uh, additionally, I'm just going to add a couple more properties from the glue model that came from Revit. 
Uh, I'm going to go down here and find the mark uh, parameter from Revit that's been published to glue, and I'm going to map that to the field tag number uh, property. So one more thing here I'm going to do is go find the uh, description. So inside the Revit families, uh, there's a description parameter inside the type properties, and I'm going to go find that, and I'm going to go map that over to uh, the field property called description. So there's a description parameter. I'm going to go and select description from field and hit next. Now at this point I'm not going to go and add properties to publish back to Revit yet. I'm just going to go through a slow progression of mapping these things. And just because I uh, have the ability to, it doesn't always work, I found. So as you can see here, all 58 items were successively published and mapped. So uh, I've had drop-offs when I was doing this with a whole bunch of settings mapped. And now if I go back to my main dashboard out of the Project Admin portal, I'll see that all 58 items are in my equipment list, which is great. But I didn't get everything I wanted out of the Revit models that are in glue. So I need to go back through another round of equipment mapping. So I'm just verifying here to make sure that everything looks good. Um, I can see that uh, everything for the most part is nicely um, mapped across that I asked it to do. So the asset identifier, the tag number, and the description. Uh, I can use the filters over here on the left to isolate particular VRF equipment. So I'll just go into uh, description here and type in heat pump. And I can see the two heat pumps that are in the model. Uh, I'll go do the heat recovery units. Those are the distribution devices uh, that feed uh, the refrigerant information across the network. And then finally, the actual uh, air handling units or the variable flow units in this case. And there should be 44 of these guys. So as you can see at the bottom, I'm getting a count of how many of each uh, of these elements are there. And I can switch back to Revit here and verify that that is truthful. So now I, I want to go and add uh, the manufacturer and the... Um, the model number. So if I go back in here to glue and go take a look at the properties of my heat pump, for example, I can see that uh, there's no equipment properties being mapped back because I haven't I haven't told uh, field to map properties back uh, into the glue environment, thus being able to pull it through into Revit yet. But we're going to take a slow stab at this and go through another round. So I'm going to go back into the project admin portal. I'm going to select my equipment. A tab on the toolbar and I'm gonna go and remap again so this will remember your mapping from the previous round all I have to do is go and add additional information here so in this case I'm gonna go into my properties and as you can see it's only showing me the item um, category from glue so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, exp you know, collapse some of these sections after I show all the categories and I'm going to revert back down to Revit type again because that's where manufacturer and model number can be found inside of Revit. So here I'm going down the list of type properties from the Revit families and I have found model and I'm going to map it to a custom parameter inside field. So I had to make this custom property model number in field that did not exist. It's not one of the standard properties. And likewise manufacturer is not a standard property in field so I had to go and custom build that and if you look in the mapping environment right here, up across the top, there's tabs there for standard properties and custom properties. And that's where I made the custom properties. Uh, once again, I'm going to skip over pushing properties that I made backwards through glue to Revit. I'm just going to go ahead and pull properties from Revit through glue, uh, glue into field and have that process to update my equipment uh, list. Now, in the background, you can see that little uh, message there from Windows 10 telling me that my mapping was successful. That's normal. You'll get emails as you work through these steps uh, repeatedly. They'll show up as notifications in the upper right corner of field as well, uh, so you can go and check your history or your activity. Okay, now we're back to the dashboard. We're going to go into equipment, and we're going to go check and see if that uh, manufacturer model number information came across from the glue model that was glued from Revit. And as you can see, I, I got the manufacturer and the model numbers now up there, uh, which were not there previously. Um, so now it's time to go and take a look at actually adding properties back word to word field, uh, from field to glue to Revit. So again, going back through another progressive round of mapping. 
this time I'm just going to skip through all the mapping of properties that currently exist, and I'm going to push properties that I created in field backward. So now I'm just going to click through the dialogs here to um, get to those custom properties. So I've gotten all I can get out of the models. Now I'm going to start putting data in my field environment that I custom built. And uh, obviously, if I'm going to hand over my model, I want that data to be in the model as well. Um, so I might want to share that with the owner, or uh, I might be exporting to ops here in, in a little while so that the owner can operate their building based on this equipment. And now you'll see that the processing is completed. Uh, just like it was before, all 58 records are done. And now if we go back into our equipment uh, on the uh, main dashboard, we should see the ability to go in here now and add some property values to our installer company. Now just because it displays in the equipment uh, window here, it doesn't mean that it's actually on the equipment itself back in the model. So now that one parameter installer's company is, I'll just give it a name for the company that installed the unit. So this could be a, a, a foreman out in the field entering this on their iPad uh, or going back to the job trailer launching field and entering it there. And you can see it shows up on that piece of equipment. So on the back end, field is actually linking this backward into glue. Uh, I just have to refresh my properties here. So I'm just going to close some of the panels inside of my glue uh, environment. I'm going to go select the heat pump. And if I go to properties with my right mouse click, I'll see the equipment tab is there and there's the property that pushed backward. Now to get the value back into Revit, we need to go back into Revit and pull that property data down. So I'm just going to close the schedule view for a second here and on the BIM 360 add-in, uh, I'm going to go and publish the equipment properties from field back to Revit. So you can see the equipment set icon there on the little thumbnail. That means that there's properties available and now they've come backward. And if I select that heat pump or just go to the equipment schedule even better, I can go field that custom property that came into the Revit environment now. Automatically you'll get the uh, last updated parameter uh, from 360 so you can go and pull that into and there you'll see make, you know the Fahrenheit mechanical company back in Revit. So slowly progressively uh, mapping might yield better results for you.